All right, so it is 7.18 in the morning. And as you can hear, the house is very active and I am breaking my neck to get ready. Uh, got me a food situation going on here in the air fryer. These are frozen Boca chicken patty. Listen to them sizzle. I know they're plant-based. You know me. I'm a latchkey kid. Nothing's off limits to me. Gen X. We never played by any specific rules. All the diets and diet food are on limits to me. I only worry about the calories. These were cheap and they were frozen and we're doing frozen food slim down so we got to combine them with other foods that aren't frozen that'd be the case sometimes so i got these cheese slices here at 40 calories so i'll add a little bit of uh honey mustard to that and these chicken sandwiches will be my lunch this morning or breakfast and yes i am eating earlier than my window i am going to be very active today and i need these calories in in order to prevent cramping if you don't eat and try to go out and do the things that we do you cramp abdominally and i've experienced that before on other diets so don't want to experience that again so i'm going to eat all right so i opted for a little barbecue sauce instead and uh, I gotta save camera space so I'm gonna eat these and then we're gonna head out the door to go do some of that metal detator and stay doing for that mm. alright so it's 7.30 now and uh, everyone's here except my dad who was going on the detecting adventure we're waiting on him I don't have time for COVID this morning, so I'm drinking that energy drink, that last one that I had uh, bought the other day instead, and uh, it seems to be doing its job. I like that shot of vitamin B12. I think that's a real kick in the pants to get you going. Anyway, we'll talk to you soon. I am out here today with my friend Tracy. <laughs> young zach over there mike noble which you uh have seen in some of my videos the guy with the green hat and on the other side of the truck is my father lucky gene and we're going to hit this today to see what we can find hopefully we can come up with something colonial but we are here and we are fixing to get started on this adventure and uh, as we find stuff we will uh Film it and document it. Sound like fun to y'all? Well, I really love the sound of that. All right, let's get started. We got Tom. Ah. Tom and Tracy, they're making the grand appearance again. Been a while. It has been a long, long while, hasn't it? Let's see what we can uh, get into. Sounds like a plan to me. Mm. All right, so a learning experience for. Uh, everyone on my latchkey channel uh, I just dug my first signal and uh, all my sound is coming through the headphones so I'll uh, let you hear that and uh, it's registering a 64 on my metal detector which what we consider a mid-tone now, old colonial and 1800s uh, buttons are made of brass. But the problem with that is, so is everything else made of brass. So, 
You want to locate your target in your dug hole, which I've already located this one. I just wanted to show you that uh, this is kind of why there's a lot of work involved in metal detecting because you not you never know what you're going to get on the ground. You're not guaranteed something good just because it's a good signal. You're just hoping that that's what it's going to be. You have to have the patience of a fisherman in order to do this hobby. And eventually the good stuff will come to you. So we have a collection full of it. But uh, i done my first uh, signal and this is the usual suspects here. This is my small metal detector. It's a pinpointer locator. This saves you a lot of trouble in target recovery. You turn this on aim it at the ground and you swipe the ground until you come to your target it will sound off and your target somewhere close by now i have already chipped this out of the ground and there it lies right there this is it that is a shotgun head stamp and it's a very old one this is back when they used to use paper shells on the shotguns instead of the modern plastic ones you can actually see some of the red paper peeling off right there and as you can see it is made of brass and it is button sized so something like that will get your heart pumping even though it's just hoodoo <laughs> all right we'll continue on all right so i'm picking up two signals that is music to my ears now this type of signal can be a silver coin or it can be a piece of an aluminum can because aluminum and uh silver are both very high conductive metals so they tend to follow similar patterns when you're metal detecting so if it was as easy as always digging a silver coin, that would take the fun out of it. Not really. <laughs> I'm waiting for that technology still, but hey, we've got a wireless metal detector. This thing has no wires. The coal is wireless. The housing is wireless. And the headphones are wireless. And Screaming 85. We're going to see what this is, and then we're going to see what the other one is because it sounds just like it. I'm suspecting it is an aluminum can that is torn into two pieces, but who knows? It might be two drop coins. Let's find out. Mm. All right, so we're out in the middle of nowhere, and I got lucky that everything is sandy here. Very sandy. I don't know if this dirt was imported in here or not, but I don't think it was. I think this is just where my father has been clearing and adding soil from the land itself to fill in uh, big ditches and gaps and ravines and stuff uh, because uh, there's a farm here and I dug my signal I didn't even have to break out my pinpointer because it popped right out of the ground this is an aluminum liquor bottle top and as you can see that is a very high conductor that is what it was so we'll see what the other one was uh, there's a chance it may not be a liquor bottle top. It may be something else. You never know till you dig it. So uh, stay tuned. We'll uh, we'll give it a look. <clears throat> All right. So let's check it out. That second signal. It's actually ringing up a little bit higher than the bottle top was, which is an even better sign. It's jumping into those high 80s early 90s the higher the better chance you have and the tighter the signal is the better chance you have uh, because uh, large objects will set this thing off in a high tone the same way but in a different way you can tell as you get good at the hobby whether the signal's tight or not and this signal is pretty tight but i'm suspecting it may be something big uh we'll see all right so <laughs> What are the chances of finding two liquor bottles in a row? Uh, our little liquor bottle tops, but this one's actually got the glass attached to it. It was a green bottle, and it might have been very lovely at one time, 
but uh, now it's just hoodoo, so <laughs> we'll keep looking. This is the most beautiful signal and sound I have heard in a very long time, and the numbers are right. Now let's just hope the target is right. Hear it? 93. And it's hitting from every direction that way. So we'll see what this is. Oh, this one's going to be a deep one. As you can see down the hole, you see that shiny there? That is a big old aluminum soda can. And uh, that takes a lot of time and energy to dig out. I am leaving it there. And I am moving on. I have waited too long to be out here to be digging up cans that deep. And it is wedged in there and it's in different pieces. It'll take you an hour or more to get all of that out of there. It is staying right there. Okay, so. I have stopped. One second, let me get my other camera going. All right, so I have stopped detecting for a minute. To take in the sights around me, I finally found this creek here. And uh, got to be careful because I do not want to go swimming. But I do want to go in here and show you a little bit about this uh, uh, structure we're looking at here. All right, so that side of the land over there on the other side of the creek was colonial land. That's the King's Grant land. Now I'm pretty sure someone ventured over here. But uh, this structure right here was put in place in this uh, small river a long time ago. This was a colonial river used widely. It's very popular amongst the backcountry, its name. And uh, Check out that. See that rock work there? That was either done by the colonials themselves or the Indians. The Indians used to do stuff like this to trap uh, fish and crawdad and crayfish or whatever you want to call them. We call them crawdads here. And it is beautiful. It's like a little pool there. Who knows, they may have even bathed here or whatever. I don't know what they used it for, but they were definitely here. Look at all the stonework that has been done here. That is amazing to me. And if you look at this rock right here, I don't want to fall in. I'm trying to be real careful here. But look at that rock right there. You can actually see where they drove the spikes, the metal, into the rock itself. I hope that's picking up on my yeah, right there, that rock, you can see the groove in it, clear as day. That's where they drill down into it to split the rock to make all of this. Modern technology makes stuff like that a lot easier. That was done with back-breaking precision. <laughs> But what a find to discover this right here. This is beautiful. Look down through there. Wow. I am loving every minute of it. Someone has broken those rocks apart or unstacked them to let the water through. Well, that may have been done on purpose. I don't know how it was channeled. But uh, that's amazing. And to find that uh, 
machine that had been a uh, that had been actually milled and worked right there that stone and you can see where it has been done that is fantastic so oh look there's another one i don't know if my tiny little cameras will pick it up way over there but in the middle of that stream there's another one that you can tell where the spike had went through to split the rock awesome so this is the right spot and we can spend a day out here and not find anything related to it. It is hot. The bugs are still out. It is miserable. But it is just good to be out and at least discover that part of this. And uh, hopefully we'll find some evidence that links to them. My father already has. I can show you that at home when we get back home. But uh, sometimes it's moments like this that I actually like to get out here so I can take it all in. All right, let's get back to it. I could spend the day just looking at this. Because I am hot and it is actually cool coming off of this water. Wish I'd have brought my water boots. I would go out in that and try to see what I could find. All right, so what you're about to see next, and I had to come and take a break in here and explain this for a second. And because uh, we're not sure at this point so uh, I'll have to figure this out and talk about it on a later video but uh, it's a toss up in the air of what this next coin could be it's either a cartwheel penny or a King George the first they look very similar uh, and that is something we're still trying to determine uh, due to some of the uh, corrosion on the coin um, But uh, from the year that uh, they think they're seeing on it, which is uh, 1707, would be about the time King George I was in rule. If it's a cartwheel penny, that would be King George III. But King George III definitely does not match up with the date of 1707, so... More than likely, what we have here is a King George I. Now, my father found this, and we call him Lucky Gene. If you ever go to my Backcountry Diggers Metal Detecting channel and watch through the videos, you will see why we call him Lucky Gene, because he finds everything under the sun that is rare and hard to find. It's like he just trips over and falls on the stuff. But anyway, check out this next clip and just keep in mind that uh, we think it's a King George the first over a cartwheel penny because uh, we were mistaken. Seven. All right, so Mike says that what Dad actually found here is a cartwheel penny, which will be another first for our group. And sure enough, it does have the look of that. I took it down to the creek and washed it off a bit. But, uh... What, is it burnt? I don't, I don't think it's burnt. It's just, uh... Corrosion has uh, eaten up part of the coin. And we're just lucky enough to have that much left to identify it. Because, trust me, it could have easily went the other way. <laughs> Unidentifiable. There is actually writing on the reed on the edge of this coin I can see yeah. it yeah. Oh. I can't even see it on there <laughs> alright so here is an actual photo image that uh, Zach one of the members of the group sent me and as you can see in the picture this is a King George the first a KG1 how similar it looks to a cartwheel penny so it's easy to mistake the identification if you don't have all the details completely but uh, more than likely with that date, 1701, that is what this coin is. And it is a fantastic find. All right, so after digging many, many bottle caps, we have decided to move on to a different spot. And uh, we're following this fence to get there. So uh, I'll cut you back on when we get there. This is a little treacherous. All right, so you see that big old oak tree right there? 
just behind it is a big old entire cliff that you don't want to fall down, trust me. But uh, I think it was uh, part of an original yard at one time. And on the other side of that fence, I got a theory that a house sat in that open field right there somewhere. And uh, the remnants from that house has been pushed in this direction. We can tell because we're running into old clay brick like this. And a foundation stone, more brick. I'm not sure how old the home was, but I don't suspect it was uh, too very old. Could have easily been 1800s. But I'm thinking on the other side of that fence, we'll be able to find stuff and such. I just found this honking piece of brass. I'm not sure what it is. It's been torn up by some kind of uh, heavy equipment. But it is old and heavy piece of brass. It went to some kind of uh, farming implement of some kind or something. And uh, we're also finding this kind of uh, pottery. Those are telltale signs that the old home was here or nearby. And definitely that tree at one time was a part of a yard structure. To have grown that massive, at one time it was uh, completely cleared out from around and part of a yard structure. Alright, but uh, they wouldn't have built their home on a deep cliff like that. They would have uh, headed out in that direction. And that would have probably been either to the side of their home or the back of their home. All right, we'll talk to you in a bit. Mm. All right, so uh, Tracy has confirmed my suspicions that this is an old uh, farming house that's set here. And this is always a telltale sign. This is an old plow tooth from a piece of old horse-drawn uh, plowing equipment. This would have hooked onto a piece of old... Uh, wagon type machinery you know that would have pulled behind a plow a uh, horse or mule to uh, plow the ground with so uh, we're definitely on to an older home site right here and I'm thinking it would have been on the other side of that fence is the only thing that makes sense because uh, there's not a lot of meat on the bone for a yard on the side of this cliff uh, this camera doesn't do it no justice but it is quite steep down in here and uh, this is the type of stuff where we find good finds when we find stuff like this. All right, well, we'll keep going. Mm. All right, so I'm sitting here with my friend Tracy. I'm taking a break, and he's over there digging in the side of that bank. And this home site that we were expecting to be a home site is getting more and more confirmed with everything he digs. He digged the plow point. Definitely old home site material. And what he just found. <laughs> you want to toss it to me? What he just found. If you're not familiar with this. This is an accordion reed. And it's got a beautiful green patina on it. Come off of one of those old handheld accordions. That they used to play. Back in the old timey days. To uh. to, uh, you know, uh, make music and entertainment for themselves. And it's got, it's made of brass and it's got that green patina up underneath that dirt. It's beautiful green in color. Uh, and it should have a letter marking to what reed or chord it played. These are cool to find. This is a neat and awesome little relic in itself. And uh, they don't come up very often. And uh, that's a good find, buddy. You got a keeper to take home at least. Put in your shadow box. I like it. I'll trade you 10 bottle caps for it. <laughs> All right, so we got some detectors congregating together up here. Obviously, something's been found. We're going to find out what that is right now. Who found it and what is it? Huh? Oh, it's a turtle. Yeah. 
Ah. Não posso tirar o carro, velho. Hartwell Turtle. Yep, there he is. He's just a little guy. He's young. Yeah, he's a baby. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Y'all scared him in the shell, didn't you? No, he was like that already. Mm. Okay. All right, so, standing here with Mikey, and he's showing me some gooders he found. Yeah, good enough. I saw that. <laughs> you sneaking that in there. Yeah. Let me do this one first. So that's, he's saying this is some kind of old spark plug gauge and it's got the uh, writing and markings on there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what your dad said it was. He would know. Yeah, and there was a piece of glass that was in the center, but that fell out. It broke up, fell out. Still a neat little piece. Yeah. That is a barrel keg tap. Wow, that is awesome. No, that's what that is? is? That a, no, I, I thought that was a, a gas uh, valve from... Uh, you think it's a gas valve? Gas lighting in a house. I think, mm. a, I think a barrel keg valve would be a lot bigger than that. Of course, this is broke off right here, but they would have a long stem on it. It might have had that long stem. I don't, I don't know. That looks like a spout to me. That does look like a spout. I'm going to give you that. It really does. I, I've never found one of those with that. I'd Maybe research that some more. I think that might turn out to be a keg tap. I would be thrilled if that's what it was. I think it might. I'd research that a little more. See the bottom there? Yeah. I know they had gas fittings that fit on lamps and stuff, you know, but I don't know. I ain't never seen them with a bent spout that that defined. I've never I've never seen them like that either. It's just that it is awful that narrow twist, that twister there looks like all the gas fittings i found so that's what i assumed it was could be i could be wrong i was wrong one time were you just that one time <laughs> i wasn't there for it was i but it's still beautiful case, though i like it in any case i'm glad that's frozen that way so it's a lot more displayable exactly so, that way yeah, at least and you got you a keeper behind you is a little turtle yeah, I filmed him a while ago. Did you? Okay. He ain't moved a bit, has he? Not very much. He's, he's a scared. Mm. All right, so it's the end of the day. And when I came home today, after a wonderful day with my friends out meditating, uh, we were missing uh, two key members of the group uh, that uh, hopefully y'all will meet at a later day. Uh, my uh, good buddy Chester. Uh, me and Chester go back uh, to the mid-1990s. We actually worked together back when I was in warehousing. And uh, we reconnected and uh, he uh, joined up in this metal detecting group way back in 2017. He was... Uh, one of the original members with the rest of us uh you'll see him and me together when i get to get uh future videos going uh, a little more uh well a lot more i hope uh just as soon as uh schedules pick up with my daughter and i'm no longer dealing with half days it'll uh leave me a lot of time on my hands to uh go places and do these meditating things that i love so much I don't know when that's going to be, uh, it's been a couple of years now and uh, there has been sporadic times where they have had eight hour schedules but they uh, wind up losing so much staff uh, and having to uh, cut back on uh, schedules again and again and uh, so I've been, uh, this has been going on since uh, February of this year so uh, hopefully uh, things will change on that uh, and I can uh, show you a lot more detecting videos but for now at least I am able to do the every three weeks again so three weeks from today uh, I will be doing another video like this um, and uh, this is my daily vlogging uh, channel, so it definitely goes on here because uh, this is what I do throughout this day. Now, 
finishing up food. Uh, I run when I got home, uh, which was around 2.30 or so, uh, so around 3.30, 4 o'clock. We ran to town and got my daughter some uh, Arby's. She's into Arby's uh, chicken and uh, french fries, and uh, we got her some of that. And uh, we got ourselves some Wendy's. I got the spicy uh, fried chicken sandwich and some french fries, and I'm here to tell you what, that was the best meal after a long day of meditating. Uh, the uh, Boca burgers that I ate this morning were definitely gone. I worked my tail off out there meditating today. I dug bottle caps, a lot of bottle caps, a lot of canned pieces, shotgun head stamps like I showed you. If I was to film every piece of trash that I dug, we would be sitting here for 24 hours worth of video. <laughs> Because uh, it was a lot. Unfortunately, this time I did not find any good keepers for myself. But it doesn't matter to me because I got to get out and uh, experience some good finds found uh, from my fellow uh, backcountry diggers. Um, and I'm here to tell you now <laughs> uh, that is better than any find that I could have found today, no matter what it would have been. Uh, you never know how important things like this are to you until uh, they're taken away from you so uh, I'd really cherish this day and I'm hoping that uh, at least the every three uh, week hunts do continue uh, but I am happy to share this with you today and uh I'm also happy to share this with you too. I discussed uh, that I do have a rival on this channel. Uh, a lot of my meditating friends uh, from my other channel uh, who are subscribed to it have subscribed to me here now. So uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, Mr. Jesse. That's uh, my rival. <laughs> All right. You see it, Tom? That's right. It's all right, Dr. Tom, buddy. That's right. I'm going to go get me a shirt. You, that's all you talk about is all like Donkey Kong. How you like that? How you like that? That's right. All right. I'm going to sit down and eat my breakfast every Wednesday morning. You're going to see this right here. And you're going to know it's all like Donkey Kong. Until we get this 50 pounds. <laughs> it's uh, Keeping It Real with Big Country. I'll leave a link down in the description to his channel. And you can watch him. Uh, and me go at it as we battle to see who can uh, accomplish a 50 pound weight loss first. And right now we're running neck and neck. He's down five pounds since the challenge started and I'm down five pounds since the challenge started. But after today, Mr. Jesse, I'm here to tell you, I burnt off every calorie from today and yesterday and probably the day before. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you I did. So, uh, the scale's gonna be interesting this week for sure. Um, but anyway, that is all I have for today. Until tomorrow, you folks have a good one. Mm -hmm.